Okay, now let's talk about some other operations on vectors beyond just addition. So the first thing we can talk about is something called scale or multiplication. So I'll just define it here. So I have the constant k times the vector a, b. So where k is just a regular number and a, b is actually a vector. Then the resulting vector is k, a, k, b. So that constant distributes right through there. This actually has kind of a neat interpretation geometrically. So for example, let's say k is 2, so I have 2 times a, b. So what that's going to give me is 2a, 2b, and what that is actually is lengthening the vector by a factor of 2. So if I do that, it's going to give me this vector. So in the same direction, but twice the length as b1 was before. Um, just to see another example, what about 2.5 times a, b? So it was 2.5a, 2.5b. And that's going to be even longer than the other one we were looking at. So that's going to look like this. Okay, again, same direction, but it gets longer. Okay, so let's back up. Now, what if this number is negative? So I never told you that k had to be a positive number. So what if we do negative 1 times a, b, for example? Well, that's just going to give us negative a, negative b. And what that is is a reflection of this vector about the origin. So what it looks like is just an arrow pointing in the opposite direction. Um, try and get this arrow set up here. Hang on. Oops, wrong way. There we go. OK, so this is negative v1. So let me copy that down there. So that's negative v1 which is negative a, negative b. Now, of course, I don't just have to have negative 1. I can, I can, you know, I also have a scale and flip the other way. So I could have negative 1.5 times a, b, and that would be negative 1.5a, negative 1.5b. So that would be scaling the vector and flipping it. And that would look something like this. Okay. But no matter what constant you choose, you will always be staying on the line that contains the original vector. So you'll always be staying on this line. Okay, so that's scalar multiplication and its geometric interpretation. Now another thing we can do now that we've introduced scalar multiplication is, is start to think about vector subtraction, which is just a combination of scalar multiplication and addition. So I'll write it out algebraically, but it's AB minus CD is equal to A minus C, B minus D. So algebraically, it's simple enough. It's just, it's really just like vector addition, except I took that negative sign and I, I distributed it through as a scalar one factor on the CD. So I got A minus C, B minus D. Um, but this, this actually has a pretty interesting interpretation geometrically. So a minus, so the vector a, b minus c, d, so v1 minus v2. So I actually write that as well down here. So v1 minus v2. That is actually the vector that starts at v2 and goes to v1. So let me draw that. So if I think if I start at the tip of V2 and draw an arrow that goes towards V1, that is this vector. Now, of course, all vectors start at the origin, so I'm just going to slide that down here. So this is really the vector I'm looking at. So this is V1 minus V2. OK, now what about um, V2 minus V1? Well. We talked about that's that's actually the negative of v1 minus v2. So v2 minus v1 is going to be the same vector, but it's go pointing the opposite direction. So it's actually a vector that goes from v1 to v2. So it starts at the tip of v1, ends up at the tip of v2. Uh, but again, I always draw the vectors at the origin. 
But if I slide this back up here, you'll see, okay, yeah, that's the vector that starts at the tip of V1 and goes to V2. So if I think of the tip of V1 as the origin, then that's the vector I get, okay. So it has the length of the distance between the tips of these two vectors and the direction pointing from V1 to V2. And the other one has also has the length, but it's pointing in the direction from V2 to V1. Now this is an easy thing to mess up, and I've messed this up many times, so you have to be a little careful. If you want the vector from V1 to V2, it's actually V2 minus V1. You might be tempted to say, oh, it's going from V1 to V2. It's, it's V1 minus V2. No, that actually gives you the vector going from V2 to V1. So the vector that you subtract off, you think of that as becoming the new origin. So it's like, you know, I make this vector here. So I do V2 minus V1. So I'm really, I'm really, when, I'm, when I say minus V1, I'm really sliding this vector down here until that V1 gets me back to the origin, okay? And if you, if you can't remember which one is which, you can just look at a simple example. So let's say that I had, um, let's just say V1 was equal to 0, 0, and V2 was equal to, I'll say EF, okay? And I want a vector from V1 to V2. Um, well, if I do V1 minus V2, that's going to give me negative E, negative F. So that's not right because, I mean, V1 is already the origin. So really, I see if I want to start at V1 and go to V2, I really should be doing V2 minus V1. Okay, and that would be E minus F here. So try to remember that. I'm sure you messed it up. I've messed it up many times, so don't worry about too much if you do. Okay. So one last thing I want to talk about here, which is the magnitude of the vector. So magnitude is just another word for the length of a vector. And so let me draw a vector here. And so the vector is going to have the coordinates. Oops, I didn't mean to keep the arrow going. Um, it's going to have, we'll say, A along the x-axis and then B along the y-axis. And so these are right angles here. Um, and so this is length B, this is length A. So actually what you notice is if I want to know the length of this vector, then actually I could just use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Because this is a right triangle. So I have A squared plus B squared is equal to the length squared. And if I rearrange that, I say, okay, here's, here's the notation, magnitude of B, so that's the value notation. Actually, let me write this in tech. So make it nice. Um, so we'll say the magnitude of V, so absolute value of, of vect V, is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Um, and here we go. And so here's what you notice. It actually doesn't matter if I negate the vector. So if I plugged in negative A and negative B, I would square them and I would get the same length. So the magnitude doesn't know which way the vector is pointing at all. In fact, a vector with the same length would determine the entire circle of, of that. Um, all vectors of angles, all possible angles would, would make a circle. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. So internalize that formula. That's how you get the length. All right.